Hi everyone, it's Stephanie again for another episode of Live From My Desk. I am going to jump on in and get my friend Amanda Venenzia up on here today. We actually figured it out, so we are going to go live. I'm gonna get her in on here, and we are so excited today because we are going to bring you the best of ANC 2018, and here we go. I'm here we go, Amanda. Yes! 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 We did it! Yes! yes! So this is my this so exciting? last week. For those of you who weren't watching, so excited we figured out the Facebook Live drama. So we got it. We're very excited. Amanda, do you want to tell everyone what we're going to talk about today? We, wait, where's my sign? We're talking about speakers, best of ANC speakers and sessions, and it's really exciting. Where's my son? I blame the custodian. I think he cleaned my office floor, which I greatly appreciate. So thank you, Tim. Um, but I don't know where my son went. But it's exciting. I'm excited. I can't believe we got this to work. Folks, you should have seen us on Sunday morning in our PJs with our messy hair, don't care, testing out Facebook Live. Um, Stephanie, I'm so glad you deleted that. I, me too. So it takes a lot to look this unkept. So just imagine no makeup, but we are very excited to have our second episode. And Amanda doesn't know this. So our first episode, total views of about 6,000 views on our first episode that we did last week. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> To everyone who tuned in, shared it, commented, um, yeah, we, I mean, we were just doing it. We weren't really sure how many people were going to watch the pics. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Amanda. I did make my mom watch it. I think she watched it twice. So, I mean, you know, the, it's stacked in our favor, for sure. Hey, I love it. So, do you want to kick it off, talk about some of your favorite sessions? Sure. So, you know, Stephanie and I, we kind of spoke at a lot of sessions. And when you're a speaker at a session at ANC, um, first off, just a big shout out to SNA. They do such a great job of making sure that we are ready, prepared, the technology works. The technology guys are awesome. Um, they really make it really easy for us to just show up with our content and do what we do, which is sharing our love for child nutrition. But one of the, I attended the opening general session. Um, which was with uh, Gail, Gail, what's her last name, King, and she is, I always knew her as Oprah's best friend, um, I don't watch a ton of news, because my children have nightmares when they go to sleep sometimes, <laughs> but uh, I didn't know um, a lot about her journalistic background, and it was really interesting because SNA kind of took a different, I don't know, I've never seen an opening general session, but this was done in an interview format, which was really different. And I think, you know, played to the theme where she was coming from in being on the news and doing a lot of interviews. So it was a little bit different. Um, I will say I was still a little upset that Kristen Chenoweth wasn't there because I'm a huge super fan. Um, so um, SNA, if you are listening, uh, please get her for next year. <laughs> that would make me uh, very, very happy. But, um, you know, Steph, maybe we'll do like an Insta poll and see how people like the interview piece versus an actual um, presentation that, was, that would have been done. I, I'm interested to see what other people found. Um, I thought it was a little bit less high energy. I was so excited to be there, and it was such a high energy place to be. Um, but then again, that might have been just me sulking a little bit in the audience <laughs> about the change of speaker. But she was very interesting. She had some really great points, very relevant. Uh, she spoke about a lot of the news stories that we currently see going on today. And I think a lot of things that were near and dear to people's hearts. So I thought that that was a really great session. Definitely. Awesome. And isn't that where the trending for Doug started with the JFK of SNA? Um, just going to say, I want to make a t-shirt with that or next year at ANC having like the banners. I just feel like that's such a good hashtag. And I know he's not on social media, but no. bless him. Yeah. So I, 
I think that format was very different and unique. So I thought that um, closing session with Chef Jeff killed it. So good. So good. To the point that sometimes in general sessions, especially closing session, everyone's burnt out and you're tired and you're like, when's my flight? I just want to leave. All eyes were on him for that hour. Like you could have heard a pin drop. People weren't sitting there. Oh my gosh, I'm so bored. He loved, um, I loved the quote that he said. He said that hunger does not discriminate. And I, he just kept reiterating that. And I was like, ooh, that is like so deep. And he talked about his story. So for those of you who don't know who he was, which I, I will admit, I had no idea who he was prior to closing session. I go there. So he actually spent multiple years in prison and had a mentor in the kitchen of the prison system who taught him how to cook and do that and then come out of prison he was the executive chef for like the bellagio and a lot of vegas kitchens and things of that nature which is a very big deal and he just talks about his rise and he talks about the fact that he grew up in the projects and he was bused to the suburbs to get to school and he just thought that like all of the white kids in the suburbs like did, weren't hungry and then he got to school and one of his friends was not the same race as he was and his friend was on free lunch too and he's like oh wow I never knew that wasn't just for black kids and that's how he described it and I thought that was very interesting because it's true like hunger it doesn't matter where you live you can be in an affluent city. You can be in a very low income city. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what color of your skin is. If you're, if you are a guy, a girl, it doesn't matter. Hunger is everywhere. And so it was just very powerful. So good. And then he showed everyone his man Spanx, which I didn't know they existed, but all of my <laughs> ladies who are at conference and you're speaking, everyone, if I did a poll, all of the females, have spanks you put them on under your dress because you want to look good and um hold it in hold it in so he showed his man spanks which for those of you who did not attend closing session it's literally a tank top to hold in the beer belly of the men so i thought it was great i thought it was great so um, it was fabulous, but yeah, his um, his session just hit the nail on the head about hunger. It's not a one size fits all thing. It's everywhere. Um, and he really talked about power of mentorship, which for those of you who were not part of the next gen session at ANC, that was a big topic conversation because a lot of us who are actively involved in various capacities and A lot of us have that as um, we have solid mentors, but then it broke my heart. I think there was someone at your table, Amanda, who said that they did not have a mentor. And so for me, I'm fortunate. I feel fortunate that I have amazing mentors in various capacities of my professional career. And so that was really a topic. It was nice to see that was a full circle thing. And Amanda, what about you? What was your takeaway from the next gen session? I think it's always great to just com communicate with people that are new to the business or young at heart or young in age because they have a fresh perspective uh, because they know nothing but the rules. Yeah. Oh, no. Amanda, we lost you. Um, we're going to get her back. Hey, this is what happens when you go live. But yeah, so I, while I get Amanda back on, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the next gen because we have received some messages about that, what that is. So the next gens for SNA, just so you know, that stems from the Young Professionals Task Force, which full disclosure, both Amanda and I are members of. And really, SNA felt that it was important to get young professionals involved in the association, find out what they want, how to reach them, how to attract them, how to make them feel comfortable at a conference like AMC. So that's really where Next Gen comes from. And um, we also have just um, 
SNA was great about reaching out to next gens to get um, to get feedback on sessions. So that's why you have seen this is the second year now where next gens have led a session at ANSI specifically for next gens. And this year's session was led by Naomi and Kim, who are also task force members. And we did small roundtables with our regions, which is nice because when you're at a large conference, sometimes it's really nice to get to network with like people around you that are in your region. And Amanda, I'm gonna try to add you back on here and let's see. So fingers crossed, you're gonna get on here and let's see. This, there is already a guest in this broadcast. Amanda, you should be coming back. So this is what happens, live technology. Sometimes Wi-Fi fails us, and this is what happens. There you go. You're back. Once again, I stole. So, Amanda, what was another session that what was another session at ANC that you really enjoyed? Oh, okay. So one thing is is I go to a lot of conferences. And I have my favorite speakers. Like when I see their names on a list, I get really excited about seeing them. But sometimes I don't go necessarily go to their sessions. What I really love this year was I actually um, attended a session by Kern Halls with Ingenious Culinary Concepts. And I learned new things. And it was fabulous because I went to with a speaker that I know love speaks to me in a way that I am is easy for me to remember and recall. And it was really great. He had a lot of new and interesting things to say. And he spoke with Donat Worthy. Can you hear me? No, your audio is cutting Stupid in now. School. I think you may have a Wi-Fi. You may have a Wi-Fi, but I have to give a plug while you're fixing that. I will give a plug. So we sent 17 of our team members to ANC this year, and several of them attended Donette's mobile feeding session on her nutrition ignition bus. And some of our team members said that was their favorite session of ANC. That they just said that she was a dynamic speaker, which I can fully say that because we spoke at a session together on marketing and low free and reduced district. But they just said that they really enjoyed that session and they learned a lot about modal mobile feeding, which is a huge topic of discussion in school nutrition because we realize that our students are on the go and we're trying to find new ways to feed them, but then to also utilize those buses and golf carts and everything else year round. So you are back. Hopefully your audio is back. Woo. Yeah. I connected to our Wi-Fi. I don't like to connect to our Wi-Fi because I don't like it, but maybe it'll work today. <laughs> All right. Perfect. So finish up with your Kern and Donette session. You guys interrupt. Oh. So she... Now we're friends with her. Let's 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 put that out there, okay? Yeah. So and when I say friends, I mean I literally said to Stephanie, "Do you think she'll be my friend?" <laughs> and connected with her on social media, and I said, "We're gonna be friends," and she was yeah. like, "Sounds great." <laughs> so I literally only touched this person that I speak to every day at ANC this year. And I knew that I, I liked what I saw on social media and that she was really passionate about mobile feeding and she had it going on. But then I heard her speak and I was like, girl, really? It was so wonderful. She is uh, such a dynamic speaker. Um, I know she's speaking in Massachusetts, so I'm going to go to <laughs> down, down south to the Massachusetts School Nutrition Association Conference uh, this fall to go and watch her speak again. I mean, it was, she had some really great content. I learned a fact from her, which was that our students choose if they're going to eat lunch at eight o'clock the night before. And I, I didn't realize that before. So that was, that was really, really exciting. So I'm glad. Um, my mom texted me. Stop, wow. mom. <laughs> and I'm so glad to know her. I'm glad to, that I got to hear her speak. So 
Uh, she was, oh. she was, oh, and she's, left, she's watching right now. <laughs> yes. Hello. So, and I like you. Fact, Dan said that he is currently feeding 3,000 meals a day from mobile summer sites. Um, oh, my so God. Mobile summer site goals right there. That's awesome. And, I mean, I just think that there's so many areas of opportunity. So, one of the sessions I went to was on mobile apps for menus, like to pre-order and things of that nature with Orange County Schools and Mike Craig from Nutrislice. And one thing that they're doing in Orange County, they've outfitted golf carts and they deliver the meals to like the fields for their kids, which is, if you think about it, like a football team has how many I, I'm not a sports person, I, like 100 people <laughs> think so. I, it was something like that. It's like a big number. So, like, they're doing that. But they talked about how students, they gave the example of a normal family, just a hypothetical family. And Mike talked about how many times per day that family relies on mobile ordering for their family and in their lives. From telling Siri to make a note that you're out of milk and you need milk to ordering the Starbucks on your phone so you don't have to wait in line to ordering school supplies on Amazon for a research project that your child forgot to tell you about and you're like, I need it in two days, all of this stuff. And so I was just thinking and I'm like, I really do think that's the way to go because as I was sitting in that session, I'm thinking, yeah, if I had to go into a Starbucks to get my coffee, it's not worth it to wait on that line. But if I can pay for it on my app, and then in the suburbs, we have drive throughs so like, whatever. But if I had to walk into a store, I just want to go to the grab and go line. And that's what our kids want. So I think if we can okay. find a way to incentivize the mobile menu apps to combine that with pre-ordering, I think then that gives students and parents a reason to download the apps because I know that's what we struggle with the kids are like why do I want another app on my phone that takes up photo space or selfie space or video space so if you give them a reason that's a reason because I think about the Starbucks app and I'm like I don't use any of the other features on there but I have that because I get my promos I get my stars through the app and I can pre-order through my app like that's all I care about so I thought that was a really good session that's a, that's a great point. The other and I will say, well, I just want to say, just to plug um, OCPS again, Orange County Public Schools, I actually went to their pre-con in Florida. They had a pre-con for SNIC, and we actually went to their school and saw their buses and saw their golf carts. Um, it was so cool to see that and to be able to experience um uh, experience them so they just they do a phenomenal job and they their their high school just like blows my mind they have so many different uh different points of service and so many different things and isn't that what kids want is variety and the ability to choose and to do things fast so i think that falls directly in line with that um i want to talk about some other people that when i see their names on things i get really excited um um always 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 i love to see uh, vanessa haynes from georgia she just inspires me every day with her enthusiasm for feeding children and I get really excited to see her. I don't want to break up with you. Yeah, your audio is breaking up. I can't it, hear you. But it's done. While you're fixing that, um, let's see, we'll tag team again and I'll just do stuff on the fly. Um, some people I always get super excited to see at conference um, I love seeing all of the SNA staff because sometimes like you get to like you email them throughout the year and I finally met Stephanie from SNA. I feel like I have emailed her a million times over the course of the year and then I finally got to meet her and I was like, I know who you are. And Patty's, both Patty's, Patty Fitzgerald, Patty Monahue from SNA. So I always like to see them because I like to thank them too, because without SNA, AMC would not be possible. So I think it's also to remember that. And can I just say, Vanessa Hayes is on my, my school nutrition bucket list of people to meet. I have not met her 
and I really want to meet her. So Vanessa, if you're watching this, like next conference, I just need to meet you. I just do. <laughs> you're going to want to climb in her pocket and live there for the rest of your life. She's amazing. Such beautiful energy. And uh, she's just a delightful person. So, but tell us a little bit about, um, did you go to any other super awesome sessions or speakers? Did you attend any of the open spaces, Stephanie? I did. I actually partnered up with Mark and we did the open space on the foundation because both of us are foundation scholarship recipients. And it was nice because a lot of people there had no idea about the foundation or that we had scholarships from SNA that you could use. And so part of me was like sad about that. But then I realized that even in our own department, like we talk about it all the time and we had employees in our own district who had no idea about scholarship opportunities. So we realized that, you know, they're there. And so Jane was there from the foundation and it was just nice to share our stories, but then hear everyone else's stories about their professional development goals. And Jane was there to really talk about, well, how the foundation can help achieve those goals. And if you guys don't know what the foundation is, it's um, a part of SNA that really just gives back to their members. Um, and I just have to say, Team SNA Squad Goals, which you're looking at half of it, and then Donette Worthy and Keisha Dalla Williams, we are the quartet, and we raised, I think we raised close to $16,000, or $100, 100 not 1000 sorry, $100, <laughs> I think that's what Jane said, something like that. I'm pretty sure it was close to that. It was a lot of money, and we're really excited, and it was just one hour of our time. We got people excited to donate and give back to the foundation. Mm -hmm. And if you want more information on that, just visit SNA's website. But that's how they're able to give out all of these scholarships, the breakfast in the classroom grants. I had no idea some of those grants come from the foundation money. I did not realize mm -hmm. that either. And so I attended a session on breakfast in the classroom with um, Austin schools and Charleston schools. And they were talking about how they implemented breakfast in the classroom in various capacities and different models, especially Austin talked about middle and high schools, which is a different concept because a lot of times you hear about breakfast in the classroom and elementary school. So it was a nice way to see their challenges, how they've incorporated the teachers in the process to turn ordering mm -hmm. breakfast into a learning activity in the classroom, which is always fun because you get a lot of buy-in from teachers if you're able to show that connection and show teachers mm -hmm. that they can turn it into an activity and a learning lesson. So I thought that was really good. Definitely. And we just like to say thank you again to all the vendors who sponsored School Nutrition Foundation and the activities that were happening yeah. there. They, there were prizes, there were pins, there were there was all sorts of stuff and there was so much excitement. We may have been a little too loud. We might have gotten yelled at, but it was such a great time and we're always happy to, to give back to that. And just a, a great big shout out to the SNA staff again, because all of the content from all of these sessions is available to everyone, which is such an incredible, incredible benefit to School Nutrition Association membership. Um, I know some of, uh, one of the biggest I think I tried to get into this session last year, and I think it reran this year with the top 10 mistakes that managers make. And I wasn't able to attend that session. I heard such amazing things about it. I went online and downloaded the slides and handed it to my managers, who are also members of SNA. So it was a great tangible way to bring the benefits of SNA membership home to my district and educate my staff who didn't have the opportunity to join us. So if any of these sound super awesome, just know that that resource is available to you. And you know what, Dan, you're, Dan is on it. He's right. It's sustaining our members. It's I was just spreading. Yes. Dan, I love your energy. Dan's the best. Um, so take the opportunities presented to you and really just like scroll through them. There were so many sessions. I couldn't go to them all. There were so many that I was excited to do. And I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to still learn, even though I wasn't able to go to all of those sessions that occurred concurrently. 
Exactly. And I love that you talked about vendors. So like one thing that I am adamant about and something that we always tell our team, when you are on the expo floor, the first thing you do is thank the vendor for coming because without the vendors, the expo would not happen. And I don't think people understand how much time, energy, money goes into setting up for an expo is not cheap. So being able to really just thank them and spend time with them, because I always, I don't know, like don't treat the expo floor like a Black Friday sale. That's just kind of my motto. Like go in and be nice and talk to people and get to know them. I don't know. That's just my pet peeve. And I understand everyone has their own philosophies on that but I'm just a very firm believer on every vendor you encounter thank them and it doesn't matter if you use their products or not thank them for their time their commitment mm -hmm. to helping us as school nutrition professionals further our career paths and expose us to new things new products new services new equipment because they're giving up a tremendous amount of their time and resources to make it happen. So we just kind of have to pay it forward and say thank you. Thank you goes a long way. Agreed. And we talked about this at our pre-con. Vendors are our stakeholders. They have a vested stake in how well we do in our programs. And we have a vested stake in how they're doing in their problems, programs. And we want them to be invested in school nutrition because we feed hungry kids. Yeah, they're probably going to make a higher return on their investment by working with restaurants or maybe another another organization. But we really want them to put that R&D into what we are asking for and what we want. So it really is a win-win for us to work together in this and in everything we do. Exactly. And I mean, we had so many vendors who we have vendors who um, are doing podcasts. A lot of our vendors are helping with marketing content. They're doing the flyers, the social media graphics, the toolkits. Those are resources mm. that a lot of vendors, typically, if you have something that you want done, your vendor probably already has it done. And so, you know, use them as your partners, not just to get the samples in and to get it done, but really use them and talk to them about the vendors are here for us because they want to make sure that they're giving us products that our programs want and need. So that's your time on the expo floor to really talk about, you know what, this is what I'm looking for. This is what our students are looking for. This is what our parents are looking for. Because if they have that hands-on feedback, they can take that back to their design teams and really just kind of jump on the ball with development. Bill is on here. So he's um, Cuisine Solutions, which is a big sous vide K-12 company. And they also do, if you guys are Starbucks and you have the egg bites, Cuisine Solutions is who does them, but like it's, yeah. Sure. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> so it's, but it is, it's just, I, your vendors are here to help you and really um, partner because you kind of have to give them the feedback to, for them to be able to go back to the table and say, this is what I need, or this is what I would like to see because they're kind of just going in and developing for us. So really partnering and saying thank you because, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. If any other vendors are watching, I we appreciate it. I did not get to every single table at AMC, but I'm hopeful I got to about 70% of them and said thank you. So for me, that's just a really big thing to do. Any whole else today? Yeah. You're over there. You no, know, I... <laughs> It's because I love you. <laughs> I, I think you, you just hit the nail on the head and there, there's nothing else to say, but this is so fun. This is so fun. I love talking yeah. to you every day of my life, but this live from my desk is so much yeah. fun. The amount of love that we've gotten back from this from doing one session has been just unbelievable. I can't believe that people are tuning in, but we hope that we've, addressed something for you or that yeah. we've helped you to plan your next session or uh, if you oh there is a call for proposals out there am I frozen am no, I frozen right now oh no so, 
yeah, a call for proposals if anyone is interested in speaking. ANC in St. Louis, maybe in St. Louis. Uh, please go ahead and submit yep. those call for proposals. Uh, those will end in about in September. 